Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. This video is about the three most common mating patterns arguably in the middle game. So no excuse if you don't know them. These three patterns will help you to find a checkmate in your games when you're attacking. So I can start by naming them. It's the Greco's mate, the Damiano's mate and the Smothered mate. These are very important so no excuse if you don't know them. The first one is the Greco's mate. It frequently appears in the French defense. So in this video we're going to have a look at a simplified position first and then look at how it can occur in a real game. So this is the simplified position. Uh, already here white is threatening a mate in one on h7 with the queen protected with the knight so black has to play h6 this way however it doesn't save black and black still gets mated what would you play with white You might wonder what happens here because it seems that black has more or less parried all the threats but the correct move is bishop takes f7. Of course black uh, cannot play rook takes f7 because after queen takes f7 uh, the checkmate will follow. But maybe you haven't seen what happens after king h8 and uh, there is actually a very simple move that white can play. It's the cold-blooded queen g6, as simple as that, because the, the clinch is that after h takes g5, you have queen h5 checkmate. So not easy to see if you don't know it, but if, you, if we come back to the start position here, uh, there is a fourth checkmate in this position. Now, there are many ways to open the lines around the king to achieve this checkmate and let's look at the game Reinhardt Welling played in 1995 and in this position black mates in 5 moves using the Greco's mate pattern. So you know the pattern, so try to find how we can reach and achieve a checkmate with this pattern. So it's a bit different, not completely the same, but look, knight h3, of course the pawn is pinned, so white cannot capture, king h1, knight takes f2, just notice this bishop here that controls the f2 and g1 squares in the future, so that's going to be important for the Greco's mate, king g1, Knight takes e4, discover, check, king h1, and now the very important move, knight g3, check, and after h takes g3, you play queen h5, checkmate. So this bishop controls g1, this pawn on g2 is important because it prevents white to go there, and finally, the checkmate is delivered by the queen on h5. This is a Greco's mate, a variation around the Greco's mate. Okay. Second important checkmate is the Damiano's mate, in which white is making use of the open h file in a brutal way. Let's see this in a very simplified position, how it happens. Uh, what is important in the, in the Damiano's mate is the pawn on g6, okay? So from this position, it's very straightforward. You play rook h8, check, of course black captures, and then queen h1, king g8, and queen h7, checkmate. And this pawn on g6 is very important because it prevents the king from moving to f7. 
The rook on f8 also is important because without it, it's not a checkmate yet. As previously, we see how it can occur in a real game. So here it's not so obvious that you will have a Damiano's mate going on here. So what do you play? You play knight takes h2, a very nice knight sacrifice. Then king takes h2, h4, this knight is pinned now. White captures on e4, hoping somehow to defend with some pieces, but it's too late. h takes g3 check and now I guess you see how the checkmate will follow king g1 rook h1 check king takes h1 queen h4 check king g1 and finally queen h2 checkmate well done uh, especially if we come back to the original position here uh, it's not so obvious here to find uh, how you can reach a Damiano checkmate in this position. Now, last uh, very classical checkmate of this video, the smothered mate. Uh, it may seem rare, but it actually occurs once in a while. So if you play a lot of games, you will certainly uh, encounter it sooner or later. So as usual, we will see what it looks like with a simplified position, like there. So maybe you know this already. Knight f7, check. Black is forced to move on g8. And now this very important double check. Double check means black is forced to move the king. There is no other way to parry the check. King h8. And now, up to you. To find the checkmate in two in this position. You know it. Queen g8 check. A very nice move. Then uh, black is forced to take either with the knight or with the rook. It doesn't make any difference because now white plays knight to f7 checkmate. All right. It's a very nice looking checkmate, this one, very elegant. And uh, now let's see a real game and see how we can reach a smothered mate. So here white plays queen h6, black plays bishop g7. You can always think about uh, attacking before defending. So white plays and plays rightly knight to f6. Because after the exchange on f6, uh, the checkmate on g7 is impossible to uh, parry. So black plays king f8 instead. Queen takes h7. Knight to e7. And then, here from this position, can you find the smothered mate? How you can deliver this checkmate. So it's not exactly the same uh, position than in the simplified position, but the idea is the same. You play queen g8, check. Black has to take with the knight, and here knight h7, checkmate. And it is checkmate because e7 is controlled by the bishop on e5. Again, very elegant checkmate, very nice looking. That's the end of this video about very classical mating patterns. Greco's mate, Damiano's mate, smothered mate. You will certainly score a few victories if you're able to spot these patterns in your games in real time. So I hope it will be useful to you. 
See you next time on the next video. Bye bye.